Are you ready to unbox? No. Can you make yourself ready to unbox? <clears throat> Welcome to Unboxing, folks. This is where we open our mail, things people send to us in our P.O. box, and we thank our donors, people who go to WelcomeToTheBasementShow.com and contribute. People like these people. Robert, who says, Only just recently discovered this show, and I love it. So I'm working my way through the previous seasons. Thanks, Robert. Tito, Brandon, William, Scott, Wilson, Malcolm, Benjamin, Kevin, Ferris, Michael, Andrea, Philip, Robert, Melanie, Stephanie, M Marie, Mario, Jennifer, Ashton, Anne, Zach, Tiffany, James, Nathan, Maura, Dan, David, Christine, Mara, John, Grant, Cole, Adam, Emily, Mitchell, Adam, Ralph, Mike, Kai, and the Factory Boys. The rest of our donors later in the show. There's more? There are. Just one postcard today. It's from Sean Henry. He says it's an obligatory postcard from his travels for unboxing. It's a photo by Wayne Rutledge of Clouds. That was our clouds. Oh, jeez. We got a little package here. I'm going to open this up. What's that all about? It's from Chris and Tom in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dear Matt, Craig, and Tona, Happy New Year. Chris and I have put together, with the help of an Etsy button maker, some Welcome to the Basement flair. Wow, cool. Mm. We chose what are arguably the high points of season one and two. The Mega Force Thumb Kiss and Tough Guys, Oh God, Oh Man, respectively. Okay, cool. We've got buttons here with uh, Barry Bostwick doing the thumb kiss. Probably can't see these very well. And then Ryan O'Neill saying, oh God, oh man. And then, of course, I'm the moon with a rocket in my face from A Trip to the Moon. Yes, I know someone who wants this. That'll be my son who loves that moon. Sincerely, what the crab? <laughs> Chris and Tom. Questions? Sure. I have a question here from Brendan C. Who says, who could possibly replace Don Knotts today? I got an easy answer. Tony Hale. What are the hallmarks of Don Knotts comedy? Cowardice mm -hmm. and a false sense of authority. Yes. In Arrested Development, we have cowardice. And in Veep, false sense of authority. Colin Jacobson writes, Until recently, I thought Sidney Pollock was a woman. Before I looked it up, <laughs> uh, to my embarrassment. <laughs> Don't laugh at him. No, it's funny. What is your favorite Sidney Pollock movie? One of my top ten favorite movies, it's Tootsie. And it covers both bases. But that's not my favorite acting performance of his. My favorite would be Michael Clayton. Pollock was really good at playing men of authority who were very morally gray. They could justify doing evil things. But it's okay because it's for the greater good. Michael Clayton, he really gets that down. That's also exactly the kind of character he plays in Eyes Wide Shut. Mm -hmm. And that's another really good performance by him. People out there have sent us record albums. Matt keeps those and he listens to them. That's right. The theme for today is hip-hop. First of all, we have LL Cool J, Mama Said Knock You Out. Another 3D cover like the one over there, over Craig's shoulder. Yep. An album I never listened to back in the day. It's from 1990, and I'm going to go off on a limb and say, any hip-hop you play me from 1990, I'm probably going to love. It might have sucked back then, but it sounds great today. What changed in that time? I don't know. It just seems to age really well. I mean, if you listen to, like, L Lauren Hill, that thing, mm -hmm. it sounds better today than it did when it came out. God, it sounded amazing when it came out. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of great tracks on here. Uh, I'm going to focus on the title track, Mama Said Knock You Out. Now, throughout his career... LL Cool J was always uh, criticized by his peers and often by his fans for being kind of a phony, for not being r real from the street. And so I think he tended to kind of protest too much and do these tracks that were kind of trying to prove he was hard. Yeah. So, tracks like I'm Bad from the album of the same name and Mama Said Knock You Out. Now, while undoubtedly this, it's a great song, it, it, it feels a bit like overacting because the thing about LL Cool J is he's not hard. He's smooth. Mm -hmm. His name stands for Ladies Love Cool James. That's not a, a hardcore street guy. Yeah. And he does smooth well. Uh, Around the Way Girl, which was his other hit off of this, is a, is a great song. And he does it perfectly. It's Going like, Back to Cali is a perfect song mm -hmm. for him. This happens occasionally with art forms where they demand a certain amount of authenticity with it. Usually musical art forms. Folk music in the early 60s. Blues for just decades. Or it's like, hey, he's a white person. He can't be playing blues. Or he did not actually come from a bad environment. He can't be singing blues. Or he's a folk singer. He can't be playing an electric guitar. Yeah. What we have to remember the next time it happens is that it's always a silly argument. Next up, we have Anderson Pack Ventura. I've heard of this guy. Uh, he's kind of becoming a big deal. This... Uh, Album has a real star-studded roster on there, and Andre 3000, 
Brandy, Nate Dog, Smokey Robinson. Wow. I just listened to this this morning while I was tidying up the basement. It's really great. It's got a very dusty R&B feel to it. This is practically an R&B album as much as it is a hip-hop album. So much new music that I hear, either it's dull or I'll listen to it and think, well, that was fine, but I don't want to listen to it again. This I want to listen to this again because mm-hmm. this is really nice stuff. Anderson Pack. Oh, and this was also produced by Dr. Dre. Lala Hathaway. She must be related to Donnie Hathaway. Or Anne Hathaway, the actress or Shakespeare's wife. Where there's a will, Anne Hathaway. Mm. It's an old James Joyce joke. Wow. Oh. And call Marysville. See if they located that dog man. It's a werewolf, not a dog man. You got a different lingo down in the south. Yeah, the dog man comes out every full moon. Yes, Governor. He's not actually talking to the governor. He's just an Anglophile. <laughs> Men and rabbits, same thing. It's not the same thing. I was a zoology major. Don't mess with me. When are you going to quit being a stubborn Dutchman? I remember the legend of the stubborn Dutchman. <laughs> he would make up his mind about something and you couldn't change it. And this is where I leave you behind. Wait a minute. No, I don't. Tell me all that big talk about Johnny Potatoes when the chain's off and nobody chasing you. Who's Johnny Potatoes? He, he wants to be Johnny Potatoes. <laughs> okay. That's a nice picture. They buy him in the store. It's got numbers on it where you're supposed to put the colors, you know? It's called Paint by Math. I think it's time to open our packages. Is it? Oh, Aaron from Hell's Kitchen. He's coming back with the drawings. It's a young Matt Sloan throwing his valuable snaggletooth figurine up on the roof, saying, well, that's gone. This is Kelly and Alfred from the Bronx in New York. You guys should hang out. He's from Hell's Kitchen. You're from the Bronx. It's only a few miles away, right? This is a late Christmas card. Happy holidays, because they have a dog. Here is to a 2020 filled with snuggles, loves, and licks. All right. All right. Hey, they sent us some stuff. DVDs, digital video discs, as they're called. One of the most delightful movies I've ever seen. Live, Die, Repeat, starring Tom Cruise. Edge of Tomorrow? Okay. Is what it was released as. And then they realized that they threw away an amazing title because they thought it was too smart for the people. A Hardcore Henry. First person movie. It's all shown from his point of view. Oh. Lots of bad things happened to him. Ron Howard film, Backdraft. Oh, yeah. But there's more. It's a Bollywood classic. Kutch, kutch, hada hai. Wow. It's 177 minutes long. Mm. You know, any movie with this cover, 96 minutes stops, okay? <laughs> Take my word on it, India. I think Bollywood knows what they're doing. Yeah, I think so, too. Oh, Topher Grace and Anna Ferris in Take Me Home Tonight. It takes place in the 80s. Diwale Dulhanai. Ladies and gentlemen, this movie, want to guess how long this one is? 178 minutes. 179. <laughs> I think I've made it to the bottom here. A book, Bronx Views. Oh, cool. 24 ready to mail vintage postcards. I've got a <clears throat> an envelope for me and an envelope for Craig. Would it really be post holidays unboxing without a sweet storybook? I know what this is. It's a lifesaver sweet storybook. Drawing on the box as requested, thank you. But I had a few collages in process, so I sent them along. Oh. (laughs) You and me as part of the Young Ones crew. Oh, that would be an honor. He said the Young Ones were a huge part of my college years at West Virginia University. And then he says, you mentioned Lily Dashay at one point, but for the life of me, I can't remember how she related back to Roy Orbison. Lily Dashay. Hat maker. I... Beach party. Where did you get that hat, Lily Dashay? Oh. Craig, I thought you would enjoy this. I think it makes a nice compliment with Owen Gleiberman Movie Freak book. It is A Year at the Movies. I read that book. Yeah. We've been doing this show for nine years. There's a lot of episodes. You might have missed some. Craig is going to recommend one from our back catalog. Going all the way back to season one, maybe episode four? The Great Mouse Detective. It's a Disney cartoon, right? the one right before... Little Mermaid. It's the only episode where Craig actually guessed the movie before I pulled it out of the envelope. Out loud, at least, yes. There is a button that links to that episode at the end of this video. You can click it. There's other buttons you can click. And now you don't have to click anything to watch this. So I'd just like to make it a matter of record that I requested help. You refused. 
Awkward. <laughs>